like a piece of modern sculpture, a supersonic airliner which should be airborne by 1970. An Anglo-French project, her name is Concorde. And Concorde was the keynote in London when Britain's Minister of Aviation, Mr. Julian Amory, and France's ambassador to Britain signed a joint agreement for her development and production. At a cost of 100 million pounds, the development will be undertaken by the British Aircraft Corporation and Sud Aviation of France. Designed around the Bristol Olympus engine, Concorde will fly at 1,500 miles an hour on the fringe of space itself. The crash of the BAC-111 was a tragic event just before the preview of another new aircraft on which equally high hopes have been placed. So as we look at the proposed Anglo-French Concorde, designed to fly three times faster than the 111, we're more immediately aware of the hazards and the unknowns which have to be overcome in the search for speed with safety. This full-scale mock-up at Bristol outlines the supersonic cigar in which a hundred passengers will cross the Atlantic in three hours. At speeds around 1,500 miles an hour, the fuselage has to be drastically cooled to withstand surface temperatures of well over 100 centigrade. Temperature, in fact, is one of the biggest problems at these high speeds, and the pilot's cabin is fitted with a steel shield which is raised as supersonic speed approaches. For most of the flight, the plane flies itself on instruments. Four Bristol Olympus turbojet engines will power the Concorde. This is the sound of today, and you don't need to live at the edge of an airport to know about it. You can close your windows, but you won't shut out the inescapable fact that as aircraft get larger and faster, so their annoyance value can increase. The RAF gave a demonstration of annoyance value to representatives of the government and of airlines at home and overseas. First of all, they demonstrated the sound of today, the noise of a comet as it flies low overhead. They measured the sound so that Mr. Jenkins, the aviation minister, and all the others could compare the sound of today with the sound of tomorrow. Tomorrow is, of course, concerned with a supersonic airliner, planes like the Concorde, which will fly three times faster than present-day aircraft. At supersonic speed, Concorde will build up a pressure wave which produces the sonic bang. Here it's demonstrated by lightning fighters. The purpose of the test is to discover the annoyance value and the damage caused by planes like the Concorde. As a result of the test, people in glass houses may be dissuaded from throwing stones before the project even gets airborne. A hundred passengers and all their baggage from London to New York in three hours. That's the promise of the Concorde, the joint Anglo-French supersonic aircraft. At Filton, one of three factories in Britain working on the plane, steady progress has been made. The aircraft is well past the mock-up stage. Blinds over the portholes will protect passengers from the brilliant sunshine at the plane's cruising height, 52,000 feet. At the plane's cruising speed of 1,450 miles an hour, friction will be intense. The heat shield over the pilot's windscreen can be lowered as the plane comes into land. To give him visual landing, the nose of the plane is lowered beneath his line of sight. The forward fuselage, the rear section, the fin and the rudder are being designed and built in Britain. French factories of Toulouse are working on the centre section of the fuselage and the delta wing assembly. Both nations have been exchanging mock-ups of the sections for which they're responsible. Prince Philip paid a visit to Toulouse to see how the French are progressing. The Concorde, with double the speed of any existing civil plane, is the greatest step forward in the history of passenger transport. Prince Philip saw the huge hangar in which the French version of the aircraft will be assembled for both Britain and France are working simultaneously to produce their own trial plane. 
The first flight is scheduled to take place in 1968. The Concorde is planned to enter airline service in 1971. British and French air engineers are determined that these two vital dates shall be achieved. A practical lesson in international cooperation that could usefully spread to other European spheres. The eyes of the world turn to Blagnac Airfield near Toulouse, where the Anglo-French Concorde airliner is making a first run under its own power. During these first grand trials, the supersonic plane reached a mere 40 miles an hour. Pretty light work for the four Bristol Sidley Olympus jets. of the French prototype, André Turca, and Brian Trabshaw, who will fly number 002, the British machine, said the tests had gone perfectly. As a safety precaution, Concorde was tried for size against the special emergency barrier at the end of the runway. At 10 million pounds a time, let's hope they never need it. Some said she should never have been built, but even they could hardly fail to respect the achievement that's to be realized today. All that remains if this first flight is successful is to prove that supersonics can operate economically on the air routes of the world. Already the maiden flight has been postponed for over a year, now is added the frustration of indifferent weather. But it's worth waiting if Concorde fulfills her promise. Designed to cut the flight to New York to less than three and a half hours, she could earn for Britain and France some 2,000 million pounds each. Brian Trudshaw, BAC's chief test pilot, keeping crossed fingers for his French counterpart, André Touca. At Monsieur Touca's fingertips, 110 tons of supersonic superlatives, and at last it's okay for takeoff. Take her away, Touca, she's all yours. Toward the skies, the white bird of tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, and that's at least four years ahead, Concorde will go into service. And that could be as much as seven years before the Americans get a supersonic airliner off the ground. That's why Concorde means so much to the French at Toulouse and the British at Bristol. And it's only a matter of five to six weeks before Concorde 002 makes her first flight from Filton. Between them, these two aircraft represent an investment of some 500 million pounds. But no other venture in aviation has ever promised such rewards. remains to be learned, but one thing we do know, and no one put it better than André Turca himself, my big bird flies. It flies pretty well.